that is usually run by Alkali and myself, but this time Alkali has prior obligations, so I'm going to be running it. So if you've never been to this panel before, here's how it's going to work. If you've ever had a chance to want to tell a joke, tell a little story, or try and make people laugh, this is your chance. You'll get roughly five minutes. We'll kind of base that on how many people raise their hands. And the way this is going to work is, as I said, you'll have about five minutes. Once you get close to being done, one of our two people over here, Poker Wolf or Propzilla, is probably going to be Poker Wolf because Propzilla has a um, so Disability, not a hand. I know what a disability is. I'm familiar. So, you're supposed to wait, you jerk. <laughs> so, Poker will stand up, and that'll kind of give you your signal that you can kind of wrap things up. Afterwards, the three of us will give you a little feedback, a little critique. We're, we're not going to heckle you. We're just going to kind of give you a little feedback because we're sort of semi-familiar with the stage. Um, so, there is... One main rule that I do want to stress. So, basically, do not do anything up here that you think that not even Carlos Mencia wouldn't steal. Okay, just just leave it that way. Don't try and do shock humor. None of us are good at that. It doesn't work. So, racist humor, shock humor, things of that nature. I think most of us understand in this room, but. Kind of steer away from that if you can help it. So, with that being said, I'm not going to yell at like Alkali does because I need my voice and it's only Thursday night. So, welcome to Open Mic, guys. And whoever wants to come up here and perform tonight, you can go ahead and raise your hands and I'll have my lookouts or you stand my ass. You come can. on, welcome to Open Mic. Raise your hands if you want to come up on stage. Uh, let's start with the first suitor. They're always fun. Woo! Come on up. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Ed Cohen. Yay. Woo! So I have a short story to tell you guys. I have been a reenactor for 10 years now, and uh, I like to play soldier with a good group of guys, and we have a lot of cool, interesting stuff. Some of, some of the stuff we bring out are our vehicles. They're, they're actual period. They're, they are the real thing. And I'm a driver for one of the trucks. Well, it was one morning, my unit commander said, hey, ball it. Why not we go to Dunkin' Donuts and get some coffee? Like, oh, okay, cool. So we get in, we drive around. I can drive stick, but I hate hills. He purposely makes me drive through hills. <laughs> We're still friends, but I find ways to get him back. But anyway, um, on this truck, there's no fuel gauge. What you typically do is you lift the seat up, you pull the cap off, you get a stick with inches marked on them. We dip the stick in, we pull it out, and we see where the gas level is. And then say, oh, okay, it's at 12 inches. Oh, okay, cool. So we get to the parking lot at Dunkin' Donuts and says, hey, why don't you check the gas level? You know, I'll meet you inside. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's no big deal. He's gone, lift the seat up, take ruler out, and then dunk it in. Cool. So, there he is, he's in line, and here I am, going through the door, and I get in line behind him. It's eight inches, and then I walked away. <laughs> and the lady at the counter, because apparently I walked away, I did not plan this. I just thought, oh, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to tell him. The people in line looked at him. The cashier gave him a look that was, oh. And I'm in the truck, I just got started, and he gets in and says, hey. 
you pull the classic Pauly, you're like, what did I do this time? Eight inches. And everyone just went, woo! <laughs> and that's just a typical weekend that I do at reenactments. How we were gonna do feedback. That's okay. why I was like, okay, okay. well, okay. We're good. okay. Um, you were perfect with how loud you were. It may just be the cone <laughs> doing it, but you had it just right so we could hear you with the microphone. Yes, pretty good. You had a bunch of little jokes in, in between, which is really great. Uh, just hit hard on those on eight inches. It's the most important part. <laughs> what I really liked about your performance uh, was your use of the stage. You weren't afraid to move around on there. Um, being at first, you don't have a lot of ability to use you know, facial expressions to get points across. And the Shakona shame kind of makes it a little hard to pull that off as well. So even I would say even a little bit more of the uh, movements, maybe, on some of those uh, parts. Maybe like a bit of a different stance when you're, play when you're doing one of the different uh, characters in that story. Honestly, I liked your performance. Uh, like Poker said, I, oh, well, I'm sure if you want me to be louder than you. So, honestly, like I said, I loved your performance. I love that you move around the stage. Like Poker said, that does help quite a bit with your performance. I like that you actually told a story with it that pulls people in. You had the jokes that were the small jokes in between, and you kind of led up to the eight inch, which made people go, okay, this is where we're going with this. And it, so it just made it that much greater when we heard the end of the story. By the way, what's your name? Dustin. Awesome. Guys, give it up for Dustin. <laughs> Woo! Woo! customers feed their poodles and their dogs and I'm leaving the building and I walk out the door and I close the door and I realized I left my phone on the counter <coughs> shit so 
I'm trying to think. I'm pacing the door. I'm pacing. I'm pacing. How am I going to get myself out of this predicament? I was going to think about calling. That's not going to work. <laughs> so I start knocking on the door. Hi, notice me. Hey, I see you over there. I see you hiding behind the counter. And you know, I see my manager and my and my coworker kind of like they can see me. They obviously can see me at the door. And they kind of look and then they go. And they, you know, I think they're like afraid of me or something. So I'm, it's freezing cold. I'm freezing my ass off. And I'm just waving like a lunatic at the door of, the, of this Pet Supplies Plus. And I'm like, hey, I lost, I left my phone. I can't call y'all. Next thing I know, a Brookfield cop is coming into the driveway. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> One of two things is going to happen. One, I hightail it. Two, we have a good conversation and get donuts later. So... He comes out of his car, he's kind of, he's leaning his hand near his hip, and I'm thinking, shit, I'm in a hoodie? I look sketch as shit. So I'm like all like kind of, it's really cold, so I have my hood up, I have my gloves on, I definitely look not normal. So, you know, I immediately put my hands up, you know, I'm just showing him like, hey, show the hands, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not looking for trouble, I work here. And he's like, you're trying to get into, he kind of walks up, he has this whole like cop look, trying to get into PSP? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I left my phone, and my manager and the coworker are walking out at this point, and he's laughing his ass off. And then it's me just glaring at her, like, I know you guys saw me. He's like, Well, I thought you were a burglar. You think a burglar is going to be knocking at the door? Hi! <laughs> Can I steal some stuff? So that is the story of when I almost got arrested at work. Please come to my panel at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Have fun and enjoy your first square adventure. Thank you very much. Love the shameless self promotion. I have a new <laughs> shameless self promotion, uh, amateur hour Sunday. Uh... I do have a bit of an ego. <laughs> You're a furry, we all do. Ah! <laughs> Wonderful story, very active across the stage, very interactive. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of energy. Um, I really like the story. Um, maybe it's, uh, I think my one note is, uh, instead of telling us you're going to tell us the story, just go straight to okay. the story. Okay. And you seemed a little, like, anxious, a little tense That's up because there. I'm coming, this is, like, just completely just out of whip, guys. So. Hey, those hey. are usually the best. Those oh, are usually yeah, the best. Yeah. Who's going to miss it anyway? Tomorrow I <laughs> yes, yes. All I can just say is like take a deep breath, relax a little bit. This is a really friendly crowd. Alright. Any notes from like any of you guys? Like honestly, I always welcome audience participation in my in my critiques. So a lot of fun. Thank you. I actually only got a couple minutes. So. <laughs> Alright. I'm sad you didn't get donuts. Oh, I didn't. I almost got arrested though. That that was the thought part. He was super nice about it in the end. Give it up for Ava! Alright, who wants to go next? Ow! Next! Careful, Sierra. Good Lord. Don't kill yourself. You know what? I know you want to go. Yes, go ahead. What's your name? My name is Bright. Hi. Hi. Give it up for Bright, everybody! Woo! Oh, come on! Woo! Woo! I think it works. Alright. So, I'm here to tell you today about the most comedic of topics, my mental illness. Alright, so the thing about me is that I tend to stay up a long time, and this isn't my fault, this is the fault of my medication, so I tend to be up till like 6, 7, 8 in the morning, not really anybody's fault except my own and the fact that I drink enough Dr. Pepper to get a PhD in diabetes. So, I have a tendency to just kind of stay up, play video games, do all this other stuff, and then fall asleep until about 5 p.m., and I'm too late, I was late for work. Fortunately, they're very nice about it. And by nice, I mean they say, weren't you supposed to be here two hours ago? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and they just kind of let it go, which is all right. So, what I did uh, one night was... Uh, I just kind of uh, went on Messenger, and I just was like, okay, so I'm really, really bored. This is like 5 in the morning, and there's like three people on Messenger. One person I've seen from high school maybe 15 years ago, and I wasn't even in high school 15 years ago. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to message this person. Hey there. How you doing? Are you awake? Yes, I'm awake. You just fucking messaged me. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to skip that person. All right. So let's try something else then. Let's play a video game and I go through all of my Steam games. 200 games. Yeah, there's nothing here. <laughs> and then we got, uh, so I finally go over and I play Forza 7, and if you're not familiar with Forza, it's a racing game. And racing games are horrible on keyboard. I'm bored, and I shove every single one of my eight controllers under my bed, and I grab the keyboard and start playing with WASD. <laughs> my hand cramps about five minutes later, and I'm unable to do anything. And I'm just like, okay, so maybe I can try to sleep now. My hand falls asleep. <laughs> not the rest of me. So I'm laying there and laying there and laying there, and I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. Uh, hmm. Maybe I should try to look up what's going on at first square. So I do, I look, see this open mic night, and I'm like, all right, let me prepare for... <laughs> <laughs> Wake up and realize I have no material for the open mic night, and I am on a bus to Brookfield. Oh, you poor thing. Yes, me, me poor thing, me very poor thing. And that wasn't even a sentence. You see how bad I am right now. And so I finally get on the, book, the bus to Brookfield, and I'm like, okay, let me think of this. PhD in diabetes. Yeah, that'll work. I'll just wing it from there. <laughs> That's a good joke. Yeah, good joke, good joke, good joke. And then I get here, and I forget the, enti the entire reason I was here. Until I walked through the door and saw some guy in a pink coat and realizing it wasn't even pink. And I realized I couldn't even see, and then I realized our MC couldn't even see. <laughs> and I realized everything was going to be okay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> this was my first time, yeah, doing I'm it on the stage. Yeah. That was I, that was incredible. Yeah. Do I? You yes, are you do. Great. Please do. You have amazing timing with your jokes. You get the audience involved by calling them out but not being a complete dick about it, which is great. Except oh, I wasn't a complete dick. I need to work yeah. on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's sorry. Fantastic. Yes. So, there's one critique. You told me to tell you if you suck, you suck amazingly. Do this again. Woo! You suck amazingly? I thought you said there was not supposed to be any shock you. Exactly. Oh. Oh. Chair, the insurance can't go up any higher than it already is. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to tell you a story about way back in the beginning of the furry fandom. I mean, because I'm older, and frankly, looking around the room, my own pairs of underwear are older than you are. Anyway, <laughs> this was way back, the Anthrocon that almost didn't happen. Yes, the Adams, pardon me, the uh, Philadelphia Wyndham. For those of you who don't recall, this was the year that the Adams Mark decided to, well, uh, move. Didn't bother to tell us about it, they just moved. So, I go out there, and uh, the funny thing was finding out how many people actually still showed up at the old Adams Mark site. There were messages, it's like, where's the hotel? We're no longer there, didn't you get the memo? The one that Sam screamed about for numerous days. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, this was actually only my second furry convention because I'd just attended Midwest Fur Fest and I'd had a load of fun. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to go three quarters of the way across the country with four friends on Amtrak because you know what? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh yeah. The con itself is actually pretty good. We were in a side hotel. We were a little ways away from the Adams Park, but the interesting thing about being in a hotel that this, you know, this was ten years ago before furry fandom had really taken off. So we were still the weirdos, okay, that nobody else knew about. So we're in a hotel that isn't connected to the convention, and I've got two fursuiters with me. The first morning we walked out of the hotel, and I'm escorting two fursuiters across two very busy streets of traffic in downtown Philadelphia, I will say we raised a few eyebrows. Henceforth, from that point forward, everybody else had to show room keys to get in and out of this hotel. Not us. They knew us. In fact, to the point where I was now on a first name basis with the security guy. In fact, she'd see me come and she'd just wave and open the door. Didn't even have to figure it out. Well, last day of the convention, I decided I was going to throw a party. We were up on the 17th floor. We had a balcony. First rule of, first rule of furry fandom, never get a room with a balcony. Some of you know this. Some of you will learn this. Remember this. So anyway, we go down. <clears throat> the party's going on upstairs, and I decide to wander back. And I go back to the main hotel. There's not much going on, so I head back to my hotel. Now, as I come around the corner, I look up, and I notice there are now three Philadelphia police cars inside the turnaround of the hotel. I realize I have left a party going on the 17th floor of a hotel room with a balcony with approximately 30 people up there with approximately $300, $400 worth of alcohol. Uh, boy. <laughs> so, I slowly make my way into the lobby. The security guard looks at me and waves and smiles. So, okay, maybe the shit, pardon the language, hasn't hit the fan yet. So I get to the elevators. The door's open. And one of my roommates is standing there. And one of his, and his fursuit is standing there. Now, the roommate is standing there in a pair of shorts, and has a hotel towel wrapped around his neck like a cape. No shirt. But just, and, what, what, Psycho, what are you doing out here? Oh, hi, sugar. Great, he's drunk. Oh, wait a minute, who's in the costume? Hi, Saber. Oh, he's drunk, too. Okay, guys, let's go back upstairs quickly, quickly, quickly. I found out you, yeah, no, not going to work. So, okay, get him to the hotel. They need something from the other hotel. So we try to get him across Philadelphia Boulevard, about ben, Franklin, ben Franklin Parkway. All I can say to that is, I did not know that that first suit was a, uh, shall we say, modified one. No. Oh. No. Until the pair of shorts happened to be down around his ankles. Oh. That's where I looked over and basically had my panic attack. Well, it looks like my time's about done, so I'm, you know what, if you want to hear the rest of the story, stop me outside because it gets scary beyond there. <laughs> Good luck. Enjoy the con, everybody. You frightened me. What? You frightened me. <laughs> I've been doing this long enough. I could tell you stories. Ask, I'm going to say, ask uh, Alkaline. Who is the one responsible for buying him the soda machine from hell? <laughs> oh, oh, you monster. No, it behaved for me. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't like me. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, 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 no. I thought that was a scream. Soda, <laughs> soda machine from hell. Give it up for Shannara, everybody. I think you've had your hand up the entire time, haven't you? A little bit. Uh, what's your oh, name? Sean. Everybody give it up for Sean! Woo! Good evening, everybody. My name is Sean, and I'm from uh, Cary, North Carolina. If you don't know where that is, it's basically where Nor uh, Uncle Kage is from. He lives there and everything like that. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway. So, 
for my job, I'm, I am a hotel front desk agent. My job is to push buttons, smile, and make people happy. And one thing you may not know about hotels is that they're actually managed by, well, if you see a Sheraton, it's not actually owned by the Sheraton. It's actually owned by the development agency, and they're just using that name to get business and everything like that. Probably like this hotel, but I don't know. Anyway. The GM went to me, uh, the general manager came to me and said, Hey, Sean, we have the um, CEO of our management company coming into this hotel. This is like the president coming to your hotel for me. And I need you to give him his room. I need you to be like his personal assistant and make sure that his day goes well and everything like that. And I said, oh, of course, of course, of course, I can do that. And one of the first things we had to do is that we had to pick him up from the airport. He was coming in from Indiana, I believe it was. And so he gives us a call and he says, I'm at the airport and I need to pick up. And I said, perfect. You'll just want to make your way down to zone 16. It's on the lower level right next to baggage claim. I'll let the driver know you're there. 20 minutes later. Um, Sean, where, where's the shuttle? Um, our, our shuttle driver should be there by now. Give me one moment. I go over to our radio. Um, Donald, uh, who is our driver, do you have um, our guest with you? He said, no, I've been waiting on him for 10 minutes and he hasn't been here. And if I keep waiting, then I'll get a ticket for waiting at a very busy stop. But I said, oh, okay, well, just circle around the airport a couple of times and uh, we'll figure out what's going on. And so I give him a call. I said, are you sure you're at zone 16? The driver's been waiting there. Um, no, I'm actually at zone 14. No, no, you want to be at zone 16, sir. You know, sorry, maybe it was a miscommunication. And he said, well, there is no zone 16. In fact, baggage claims on the top level. Where are you? <laughs> we found out. At that time, we were looking at um, his flight schedule. He had a connecting flight from Charlotte to Raleigh. He did not realize he had a second leg in his trip. So there he is at Charlotte Airport, missing his plane to come to Raleigh, and we don't know where he is. So he had to buy an extra ticket to get over to Raleigh, then the driver went there personally, picked him up, he came back, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry for the miscommunication, you know. It, it was horrible. I, the, me and the general manager were running around like crazy <laughs> because the president's supposed to be here and he's not. But, um, yeah. At the end, it worked well. It worked very well, even if he did have to spend about $300 just for a small trip like that. Just remember, as uh, Siri said, just remember that timing is very important. So the smallest jokes or making little callbacks to things, that can help too. Um, but I definitely did like the story. So just remember to add little bits of humor, sprinkle it out through there. Because if you don't, then it's very easy to uh, lose people in the middle of the story if they aren't familiar with it. So. That's about it, I think. Give it up for Sean, everybody! Alright, uh, who else is interested in going out? Alright, we're going to go with the fuzzy this time, I think. I've seen the rat has his hand, has his hand up. Or a mouse. 
Brat. Brat. Yay. And what's your name? His species. Get me out. Dip it, Dip it, Dip Hey, so I used to come up here and play guitar, right? I did that the last two years. Anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Everyone who isn't wooing obviously didn't remember that and wasn't Woo! there. And I'm very sad about that. And I'm not doing guitar today because I'm doing it tomorrow. Tomorrow's this way, right? Okay. Tomorrow. <laughs> 5 p.m. here. Five, actually. I only have four fingers. Anyway. <laughs> so I play guitar there. But here, it's comedy. What a change of pace. I mean, for me, not you. Obviously. So, what's a good comedy routine? So, it's going to need a really good hook at the beginning to get you guys thinking, all right, what the heck is this guy talking about? So, all right, I think I have one. So, one time I got pulled over by a schizophrenic cop. Should I continue? Okay, thank you. So, all right, you know, all of us have different sides to ourselves, like, here we've got our fuzzy, furry, happy party side, but we've also got, for instance, our more mature, get work done side, uh, the one that makes us money, you know? The one where we go uh, to this lady, uh, yes, I will absolutely get a manager for you because your own fingernail fell into your own soup. You know, that one, <laughs> all right? And this guy had two sides that I saw. So I was driving, in no man's land, northern Illinois. And I got pulled over in this really tiny town, you know, where all the, I mean, it's the flat lands of Illinois where all of the um, streets are the same distance apart and it's all in a grid. And it's about a mile wide total. So I pull into the neighborhood and the guy comes out, comes to my car and says, all right, sir, do you know why I pulled you over? Well, I was going a little fast. It's like, mm-hmm, you were. But uh, I did see on the radar you were slowing down. So I'll take a look at your license, please, all right? Yeah, you know, with our radars now, we can really see exactly how fast you're going. It's like, and I could tell it's your car, not the one behind you or in front of you. I'm like, I'm not telling him this, but it's like, yes, I'm in the modern generation. I know how radars work. I know that they are accurate. All right, I'll take your stuff, please. And then he leaves the area of the car and starts going, oh, that is smoking. And I look, there's this lady barbecuing on, in one of the houses, like, not in the house, but on the porch. <laughs> and he's like, oh, why are you grilling them, sister? All oh, those hot dogs! It's like, oh my god, this is going to be a horrible day for me. <laughs> or at least for her. At least for her. And then he goes into the car, his police car, and does whatever you do in a police car, calling the dispatchers, uh, yes, I've got a double O alpha on Cherry Street. Mm -hmm. And then it comes back out, he's like, Oh, that is just smoking, baby. You gotta be famous for those hot dogs. All right, so I didn't see anything on your thing, on your uh, record, really. But, uh, so really, the worst I could do is a fine, but let's face it, we don't want to do that. I could fine you $100, and that's just going upward to Blagojevich. We don't need that. We don't need to give him our money, all right? So yeah, just... Do that, son? You good? He's like, uh, yeah, I'm good. All right, drive safe. All right, real talk, sister. How much you want for one of them hot dogs? I left immediately. All right, I'm playing guitar tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Here, Ratmos in concert, you should come. tell you right now that your timing is perfect and 
if I didn't know better, I'd say that you've done comedy more than once. You you are really good, especially with the different voices. Yeah, I like the hot dog person. You know, I, I really like that that, that cop. Just, um, yeah. <laughs> we want more bad cop. Yes. <laughs> no, you're wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yes. I think when you meet it, you want more car car. I, I'm not shocked. I'm just, I'm just impressed. Color me impressed. <laughs> cameraman to take the stage. Woo. What's your name? Eric. Give it up for Eric! <laughs> okay, this is kind of a story that happened to my uh, dad's sister at uh, this uh, county fair. So uh, bear with me. Uh, quick, quick look. Any farmers in here? Nope. Oh, nope. oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, okay, I work for my father on his dairy farm about two hours north of here. So if there's any funky smells that don't exactly like smell right, that might be coming from off of me. So, this is more of a story where you gotta, you always gotta watch out what you're saying to, say, small children. Okay, basically my brother had, was showing an animal at the, at the county fair. A large cow, and she wound up having her calf there. And this is, you know, this is not something that happens all the time there. And the animal is actually having trouble giving birth to the animal. Okay, do you guys remember some of those that sort of rubbery, gluey thing that you try to hold on to it keeps on sliding through your hands? Okay, picture that about the size of a Labrador popping in your hand. That's what it's like when a cat, when a when an animal gives birth. So they're helping the animal pass the calf with uh, some tools, a, a rope, and what's self-explanatory called the pole jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Trust me, if this ever ever happens to a human, call Guinness. <laughs> so as they're helping this animal, you know, do what needs to be done. This lady behind them says to her small child, probably about five years old, Look, dear, this is how you were born. <laughs> but no, this is the funny part. My father and my sister look at each other with the exact same look on their face. Your child was born with ropes and a pole jack? <laughs> They didn't say this out loud because if they had that that barn would have been cleared in a second. <laughs> and that's basically my whole story. <laughs> so my my one I'll start with my critique. Hi. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. And just if you do stop, make sure you said something funny. You did excellent with the punchline. Especially there. <laughs> um, also, this panel is rated R. Oh, you're telling people how child are born. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. That was an excellent. Excellent. That was the woman's. Excellent story. Excellent story. You know, fantastic story. I would love to see it again sometime. Um, yeah, just keep working on it. Um, if you're able to even have more stories on, you have plenty of time to even tell another story. If you have. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, this is like my first time doing it get up here on stage. Jack, well, you, you did, did a fantastic job. And you did the right thing. If you don't have anything else, always feel free to stop. Yeah. Exactly. You stop when you want to. Perfect. That's perfect. So, okay. thank, thank you, you very yeah. much. Give it up for Eric!
know, that was kind of presumptuous of me to assume that you were talking to me when you said the cute fuzzy thing. Uh, you could have been talking to anyone in here, probably. It's just like, cute fuzzy thing? Oh, that's me, thank you. Um, so, uh, I'm a substitute teacher, that's my job, it's my primary source of income. In order to become a substitute teacher, you need to have a physical done. And, warning you now, this is not the I got fingered by a doctor story. <laughs> If you listen to the Three-Headed Monster CD, Xander already beat me to the punch on that one, so we're not going to go down that road. I do have a fisting joke, though, so we'll, uh, we'll get to there when we get there. Um, so uh, I, I learned real fast that uh, when I go to the doctor for a physical, a physical is not a difficult thing to do. Uh, but the amount of pride bordering on arrogance that I get when I am able to execute the simple tasks that the doctor is laying out for me is completely inappropriate. For example, all right, hold out your arm. Oh, I got this. All right, please touch your nose. Oh, we ain't playing now. Bam! Okay. Congratulations, you can complete basic bodily functions. <laughs> I've always wanted him to like notice my perfect record and then like throw a ringer in. Like right after I touch my nose, he goes, okay, stick your thing, stick your face in your mouth. What? Put your fist in your mouth, pussy. <laughs> uh if you can't do it, you definitely have mouth cancer. <laughs> If you can't fit it in your mouth, you're not going to like where it's going next. <laughs> that was the fisting joke, by the way. I don't want to make sure. Else, yeah. I think I'm like one and a half minute in, and I think that's a good time for the fisting joke. Um, comedy is a very strange performing art. It is the only performing art that you have to be 100% original on your material. Like, actors don't have to worry about that. There are entire troops of people that are dedicated to performing only Shakespeare. Uh, I was a music major in college. My whole deal was performing things written by other people, most of whom are dead as shit. <laughs> I never had to worry about some pretentious online blogger going online after one of my concerts claiming that I've plagiarized Beethoven. Like, that didn't happen. You could never have like a comedy cover band. Like, up next, a selection by Carlin, comma, George. Like, if I wanted to, I could come up with a comedy cover band thing. But what I think I would like to do is that thing that cover bands often do, where they slightly change the name of the act that they're trying to emulate. Like, recently I saw a band called Think Floyd. <laughs> You're ahead of me, yes, they're a very good Metallica cover band. Um, <laughs> like, for example, say I want to give my audience some nice, clean, family-friendly comedy. I've been so good at doing that so far. With maybe a 90s flair, I could call myself Barry Feinseld. That would be nice. Do a bit of that. Maybe you like food jokes. I could be Jim Laffigan. That would be a good one. Or maybe if I want something raw, edgy, and exposed, I could be Louis K.C. Only, maybe I would lean off the exposed part, considering uh, he did that whole thing. There we go, there we go. Okay, but maybe I want to impersonate some of my favorite furry comedians. How about I could be Zanny the Cerulean? Or maybe Alcohol Bee's Mouth? Like, I could be any one of these, that could be. I see the dude over there, so I'm going to give you my last little tidbit. Um, this, one's a, this one's not a joke, this one's for fun. Uh, one year ago, at this convention, I met one of my absolute best friends in the Headless Lounge, right over there, and he came to my show. So, never underestimate how wonderful this fandom is. It's amazing, uh, and I'm going to leave you with reminding you to do the E621 rule. You've heard it before. Eat six meals a day, take two hours for every shower, and you only have to sleep once. <laughs> Thank you very much.
And normally I have a full suit. Okay, all right. I don't have a room before, yet. Before you go any further, continue doing this. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. And there was oh nothing God. better than having a nice cute fuzzy face staring at us after some of the nastiest yes. jokes I've seen on that stage. Yeah, I think <laughs> purple and fisting those both. Well yes, good. exactly. <laughs> Please keep doing it. I will try. Find other places to do it. You're great at what you do. Please see me after the show, because I really, really, really want to see you do a ten-minute set sometime. I would love to do that, because I had to cut out, like, half the shit I prepared. <laughs> <laughs> you can fix that. It's a good right. problem to have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody, give it up! Come on, Harold! Oh. Hey, that's the one. That's the guy. Oh, hey. uh, let's see here. You've had your hand up the entire time. So, let's go ahead. Okay. Yay. Give it up to the chairman of Fur Reality, Woo. Epoch. Woo. Woo I'm still not ready to be chairman. Good God. <laughs> All right. So, I have to tell the story about what happened the last time I had to prep for a convention. So last year, I was the director of operations. So TAC was our chairman. We decided, well, we had to stuff a bunch of bags for registration. So we decided, okay, weekend before the con, get all the staff together. We only get five people. It's like, there's 30 of you. Could five? So five people showed up. <laughs> and then everyone that lived there showed up. And then I showed up. We had 10 people. Good. Good turnout. So, we're working hard. We've been at it for about four or five hours, stuffing bags, and it's like, it's like we all got paper cuts. It's like, all right, guys, tacos. I'm gonna go get tacos. We're gonna have a great time. Somebody find Tack. Where did he run off to? So, I run to Taco Bell, and it's like I'm looking at my watch. It's like, oh, it's noon. Wait, we started at eight o'clock. No wonder nobody showed up. So, I get to Taco Bell, walk in, there's a line of cars behind me. It's like, I'd like 50 tacos, please. <laughs> and I just get the stare of hate. <laughs> because I, what I didn't realize, somebody didn't show up today, and Mary's on the line. Here's how Mary makes a taco. She takes the tortilla, puts it down, puts the beef in, takes the lettuce and the cheese. Then she wraps it and gently places it in the box. You'd think Mary would be about 80 years old. She looked about, I don't know, 30. <laughs> Just gently placing tacos. It's like, it took me about 15 minutes to get my tacos. It was painful. It's like, I finally get my box of tacos, and it's like, I get a text message like, where are you? Like, I'm coming back. There was a delay. It's like, I could see the line of cars, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I walk out the door, get to my car, start driving back. I'm thinking, thank God that's over. It wasn't over for Taco Bell. I found out later where Tack went. Two minutes after I left, he shows up at that Taco Bell, walks up proudly behind the line. There's a crowd in this place. The cars are in the other parking lot. I'd like 50 tacos, please. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the end of the story, because that'd be too quick. Oh, dear. I get back. We managed to eat 50 tacos. I mean, 10 people with 50 tacos. It's like, by the time... We were done, there's three tacos left, and we're all like, I can't, man. I've eaten too many. So, we're all good, we're happy. It's like, okay, everyone get back to work. Then I hear the door open. Hey, everybody, I brought tacos. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> We can't eat any more tacos, Tack. Like, what did you do? It's like, I went out and got tacos. Where were you? It's like, oh, I had to go to the store. It's like, what are we going to do with this? He's like, I have an idea. 
And then, so, okay, I have an idea. Every time somebody screwed up after that, punishment taco. <laughs> you are going to stand in this corner until you eat this taco. <laughs> and I will stare at you until that taco is eaten. Well, that got rid of ten tacos. <laughs> well, okay, that's not enough. Clearly we need a new idea. You have done a great job, Orion. Punishment taco. I'm sorry, reward taco. <laughs> that's how we got through another uh, 20. We had to throw the rest out. <laughs> No, you were perfectly fine. You, that, that's the best you've told that story yet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, you've told that before? Oh, yeah. plenty of times. If it's the first time he's really, really done it. You probably told it. We'll, we'll give thing. you the rest of your cr critiques in your room. It was the <laughs> horror story. Oh. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I told that at the horror story the next week. Give it up for oh. you. Oh. 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 Two years. more, I think. Uh, I see your hand up. And your name? Raving Rendell. Raving Rendell, everybody! Give him a hand! <laughs> and I can blame being suckered into theater for my... Every time I see a stage, I want to get on it now. So. Um, I was living in Washington, and a friend of mine wrote me into tech. So I did tech, we did a, kind of a parody, which was fun. My character in the parody, I was the sound engineer. And this was, you've probably heard of some of them. They're not a play, they're a play about a play. This group was called Farndale. If you look them up, they're very fun. I had never done sound before, like with a huge... You're talking the huge thing with the volume and the appropriate mute button. <laughs> the first thing that my character was supposed to do was play karaoke music so all the characters could sing a Christmas song. What I didn't know was that one of the mute button's light was broke. And when we went to push the button, there was nothing. There was nothing for two minutes while we sat and tried to figure out why this wasn't working. The good thing was, my character was an 80-year-old person who did not know what technology was, so we got away with that. <laughs> the kicker is, he was doing tech, and on Facebook said, everybody come on down, we want, I need some company. And I got told, if you're coming down here, you're auditioning. And I could have killed him with a stare because I am an introvert who would take an F rather than stand in front of people. And now I'm up here. <laughs> so the one, th the one thing I've always had trouble with, though, is saying no. The worst experience we had somebody talking about work I'm a dishwasher. I go in the back, I do everybody's dishes, all you all can deal with the customers. I don't like customers. So the first, first month I was at my first job, they put the dishwasher on cashier. And we had probably about 40 people in line. This was 94, so all we had was a very small printout and I had two hours of hell trying to figure out how a computer worked. So, I'm sorry, I'm, I am shit tonight because I shouldn't have come up here. You're doing great. Yeah, great. Thank you. How much, time, how much more punishment do I have up here? As much as you want. Uh, you got about another uh, two minutes. As much punishment as I want. This is a convention, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the sucker who's going to be doing the panel on Saturday. I don't know how I got myself tucked into that. <laughs> How, I will ask one question. How many people are from out of state? Oh, okay. How many people know how to drive on an interstate? How many people know what the speed limit is supposed to be on an interstate? Okay. 
My dad doesn't. <laughs> I, I'm sure everybody has this. You have, everybody's heard of the rule, the, what is it, 2,000 RPMs rule, where if you go over 2,000 RPMs, you're wasting gas. My dad treats this like biblical verse. We come out of Minnesota, which is where we live, and we're on 70 mile an hour road going 55. Everybody in the entire state of Wisconsin last year and this year passed us. Every single car passed us to the point I was looking up, and I did this this year too, I was looking up waiting for the traffic helicopter saying, oh yeah, we got some assholes sitting here on I-90. We don't know what he's doing. All the Amish are passing him at this point. And we were every single town. We drove 60 miles an hour. A five hour trip took us nine hours to get here. That, and I tease him about this. Me and my mom actually, when we went to Madison, started threatening him that we were gonna have the cops behind us not for speeding, but for moving violation. Because we were going 20 miles under the speed limit. So, by all means, if you're coming here from different states, do the rest of us a favor, go the speed limit, because you don't want to end up on the news as that guy. <laughs>
If he jumps on the grid for a grenade or bullet for you, you better do the same thing back. Because for me, I don't care, I love everyone. But if my friend wants to get that hot girl and her job and her friend comes in, you don't know, no dicky wicky rah, rah. My ass gonna be like Chewbacca. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna be top gun in this shit. If he doesn't do the same thing to you, be Maverick or Goose, you kick his ass out. He's no longer your friend. Alright, so come on, let's have a good weekend. And by the way, I've been listening to your comedy things. I've been running back and forth. You guys do great. I've been traveling a lot. I've been hosting some open mics. I've been to Vegas, Miami. I'm working with Lionsgate Productions right now. And be honest, I'm thinking, no, I don't want to applaud or anything. No, fuck you, I am. Yeah, man. Get on some nice people. That's what I love here. You are actually the most entertaining people I ever see. And yes, I'm saying you people. Because I don't know what the hell y'all look like under those suits. <laughs> see, anything can happen this weekend. Let it go. Woo! <laughs> We're going to be arrested together. Be like, what's up, officer? That's the weekend. I'm sorry. I don't mean to get perverted. I'm not like that. I'm a funny, I'm a family man. No, I'm not. I'm joking. <laughs> really shit. I don't know. But yes, please. I, out of all the people I've seen done open mics, you guys done the hardest work. And my first time on stage, I actually got booed off. It was really bad. I was like... I get a joke, and they're like, get the fuck up, go kill yourself. <laughs> I'm being serious, that happened. I'm sitting at home, I'm like, I can't be funny. I touched myself, and I... <laughs> yeah, and how do you come back with that? No, go out, try it again. Because you guys got it. Just find yourselves. That is the major thing. Find yourselves, play that character. Do your inner thoughts, and you will make it. And trust me, I've been watching some of you guys, and I would love to talk to you all later on about stuff. Because I see a lot of potential. Alright? But till then, remember, this is your weekend. Let's get drunk, have a one night stand you're going to regret, and we don't talk about it, because this is your Vegas, baby. God bless you all. Woo! said this is your weekend go out and enjoy it mst3k is tonight and the con hasn't even started yet go out and enjoy the rest of your con i'm citrine husky this is propzilla and poker wolf thanks guys thank you good night